So today's program is about the Battle of Karbala. But before we go into the Battle of Karbala itself, we need to understand why this Battle of Karbala is so important to us as Muslims. Why should we feel hurt when we remember Karbala? Most of us are not aware of who are the Ahlul Bayt, the family of Rasulullah sallam. The Ahlul Bayt. Remember these two words, Ahlul and Bayt. Ahlu means people and Bayt means house. Ahlu Bayt means people of the household of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we speak about the Ahlu Bayt, we speak about five individuals in particular. We speak about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Fatima alayhi wa sallam, Imam Hassan alayhi wa sallam, and Imam Hussein alayhi wa sallam. These five individuals are known as the Ahlu Bayt. There are some other narrations that say the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam are also counted among the Ahlul Bayt, and Salman al Farsi is also counted among the Ahlul Bayt. Tonight, inshallah, is about Karbala and about Imam Hussein in particular. So, if you want to know about the Ahlul Bayt and all those who make up the Ahlul Bayt, we will need another program, Chairman. All right? And I think after if people leave the group tonight, they will want another program. All right? Good. Now, this part of Karbala. Occurred on the 10th of Muharram, that is, today's day. But the 10th of Muharram in the time of Hussein alayhi salam was actually a Friday. In his time it was a Friday. But before we go to the battle itself, we would like to talk about the Ahlul Bayt, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 
who ever is at peace with Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein, I am at peace with them. And whoever is at war with Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein, I am at war with them. This alone shows us that we need to love them and we're supposed to be in peace with them. Most of us have a connection with Abdul Ghani, believe it or not. Every day, at least five times a day, we have a connection with the Abdul Ghani, with the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And most of you will be thinking at this point in time, what connection is this? How can we say we have a connection with Abdul Ghani? In every salah, we read, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. O oh Allah, send blessings upon Muhammad. Wa ala ahli, wa ala ahli Sayyidina Muhammad. And upon the ahl, upon the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every salah. You cannot read salah without the root sharif. If we recite salah, if we read namaz without the root sharif, your salah is considered fasting and battle of no value. So each and every one of us recites the root sharif in salah five times a day, at least if we only read in far. Right? We're not supposed to only read far. Then. So the man, after I mean, these things will be waiting on the day of judgment itself. It will carry down our scales of goodness on the day of judgment. So even let me just say we read only the five times salah alone. At least for these five times salah, we are sending blessings upon the ahl, upon the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In particular, we are talking about Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. There's a hadith from the Sunan of Ibn Majah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he speaks about Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. He says, Man ahab al-Hassan wal Hussein, whoever loves Hassan and Hussein, فَقَدْ أَحَبَّنِي Indeed, they love me. Whoever loves Hassan and Hussein is in love with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَنْ أَبَغَدَا هُمْ And whoever is angry with them, whoever, is, whoever has hate for them, فَقَدْ أَبَغَدَانِي Indeed, they have hatred for me. So this, we don't have any hate for Imam Hassan or Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein and Imam Hassan, one day they decided that they wanted to find out who had the best calligraphy. Who could write the best? Who has the best writing? So they decided that they will write some script. They decided to write. After they wrote the script, they said, well, who has the best handwriting? Let us get someone to judge. Who has the best handwriting? So they go to their father. Their father is Ali. When they went to Ali, they said, well, oh, father, which one of us has the best handwriting? And present their scripts to Ali. Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he couldn't bear to disappoint any one of his sons. So he didn't want to say Hassan had a better handwriting than Hussein. And he didn't want to say Hussein had a better handwriting than Hassan. Most parents today would choose one, right? But not Ali. Ali didn't do that. Ali said, he played smart. He said, go to your mother Fatima. Let her choose. So they went to Fatima, alayhi salam. And Fatima, she looked at Hassan and she looked at Hussein. And she couldn't break the heart of either of them. She says, Go to your grandfather, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is looking at Imam Hassan and is looking at Imam Hussein. These are beloved to him. He couldn't give, he couldn't say, he had Hassan and Hussein. He says, you know what, wait for when Jibreel comes. Jibreel will decide. <laughs> Jibreel alayhi salam, he comes. Jibreel said, I will put it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Jibreel, you give Jibreel, you tell Jibreel, take this apple, and he gave Jibreel an apple. Jibreel was presented with an apple. This apple is to be placed on whosoever script is better than the other one. The two scripts were put in front, one next to the other, like this, and the apple appeared and it fell on the script. The apple split into two, one half on the script of Hassan and one half on the script of Hussein. This is the rank of Hassanayn Karibayn, the grandsons of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First, this first time most of you have heard this. This is recorded by Imam Nasafi, also in Usatul Majalis. Imam Hussein is the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Abdul Khalq, the best of creation. The best of creation, he is the grandson of the best of creation. He is the son of Fatima the leader of the woman in Jannah. He is the son of Ali, who is known as Harab Allah the one, the one whose face Allah has ennobled. 
and why Ali has been given this type title, Haram Allah Wajhu. When Ali was born, he was born in the Kaaba itself, inside the Kaaba. And from the time Ali Radiallahu was born, he was born under the gaze of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ali Radiallahu never committed idolatry at no point in his life. Because he was under the guidance of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the day he was born. And because of this, he was known as Haram Allah Wajhu. May Allah ennoble his face. This is what people recite after they say Ali Radiallahu name. Ali was also known as Asadullah, the Lion of Allah. When they went to the Battle of Khaybar, Ali was given the title Fatul Khaybar, the one who opened Khaybar. Khaybar was a fort, and this fort, they, it had a door, a massive either iron door or wooden door, it was a massive structure. The Muslims were trying to break down this door, not one of them was able to break it down. They went with battle, battle rams, they went with everything to break down this door, the door of Khaybar. Ali radiallahu ta'ala he goes up to the door of Khaybar and he just hit it once with his hand and the door fell down. Then Ali took up the door of Khaybar by himself and he flung it against the kufar, against the enemies of Islam. When the Sahaba went to lift up the door, they say, 40 of us tried to lift the door and not one of us was able to lift that door. This is why he's known as Asadullah, the line of Allah. I want to be reasons why. And he is the father of Hussein. So Hussein is not an ordinary man. Just look at Iran, we talk about Hussein. And to make it all, you know, just to put everything aside, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says about Hussein, he says, Hussein, minni, wa anna min Hussein. Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. Look, this alone should tell you the rank of Hussein. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he even spoke about Imam Hussein and he says about Imam Hussein, he is Sayyid Shabab Jannah. He is the leader of all the youths in Jannah. All the youths in Jannah. We know there will be no old people in Jannah. He is the leader of the youths in Jannah. One um, request I'd like to make. If you all have your phones on, switch it off, please. Because it will um, cause destruction. Uh, there is a note on the phone which is called Silent. Um, I don't know if you all know about it. Be, you know, when you get a phone, when you should do with a phone, you should try to play with it as much as possible. So you find out all the different moves and the phone before you And switch it off or put it on silent. Because when you do the better speech like this and the phone rings, you get annoyed or you might get distracted, like what is happening now. Yeah. Right? So please, phones. And it's a good adapt that when you go into the machine, we switch off our phones. So Imam Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, notice the difference. We're not saying Imam Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala, we're not saying anything other than alayhi salam. Why right? is we say alayhi salam for Imam Hussein? We say Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Fatima alayhi salam. Why are we not using radiallahu ta'ala and radiallahu ta'ala and ha? Radiallahu anhu is reserved for Sahaba and for real blessed personalities. Means may Allah be pleased with them. Alayhi salam is used for the prophets. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam is used for the prophets. But this title is also used for Ahdul Bayt, for the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the early editions of Sahih al-Bukhari, after the name of Hassan and Hussein or Fatima is written, Imam Bukhari himself does not write radiallahu ta'ala anhu or radiallahu ta'ala anha. Imam Bukhari himself writes, alayhi salam or alayhi salam. This was the way of Ahdul Sunnah al Jamaa. The Sunni Muslims. And we need to go back to the original way. So Imam Hussein alayhi salam, may Allah ta'ala be pleased with him. He was living in Makkah at this time. He was invited by the people of Kufa. Kufa is when Shah which part has all these battles in Iraq at this point in time. He was invited by the people of Kufa to come to Kufa. And they would take banners from him, etc. But at this time, there was a person by the name of Yazid. Yazid was a tyrant. He was the leader of the Muslim state. Or he was the leader of the Muslims. Many Muslims didn't agree with Yazid being the leader. But no one said anything. And because they kept silent, his tyranny reigned. And we as Muslims should not keep silent when we see something wrong. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he speaks about it. He says, there are three levels of Iman 
If you see something wrong, stop it with your hand. And if you cannot stop it with your hand, stop it with your mouth, with your tongue. And if you cannot stop it with your tongue, stop it with your heart. And know that stopping it with your heart is the lowest form of Iman. Today we see a lot of wrong things being committed in our own Muslim community. And not one of us speak out against it. So evaluate yourself according to this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stop it with your heart is the strongest one. Stop it with your heart is the weakest point of faith. Evaluate yourselves.